What's going on everybody? This is Brandon with Jarhead Diagnostics. Um, just wanted to make a quick video today because I know I've been kind of absent for a while. Um, main reason for being absent, if you can see, Small Town Automotive Technologies. Um, that is actually my brick and mortar. So I'm still running Jarhead, still have the tools, um, the mobile is still going, but we decided to add a brick and mortar location. So we've just got a small uh, two bay shop in Lexington, North Carolina. So that's kind of what I've been doing here recently. Um, but now that I have a shop, I needed to build another dyad cart. So this is a walk around of the dyad cart itself. So stick with me, let's go through the cart and we'll see how it goes. All right, so as you guys can see, it's just kind of a basic layout of it. Um, I built this box. Um, there's really nothing underneath it right now. I'm thinking about putting a trap door maybe under this just for some extra storage, but it's just a tight fitting box. So that way I've actually got a work platform. Um, this is just a Harbor Freight five drawer roll cart. Um, I think it's their $300 one, but I didn't want to get a snap on because as you can see, I've kind of drilled into it and I'd hate to drill into an expensive one. So we'll just start from the top. I got my Varus Edge setting up here on its workstation. <clears throat> Typically, my Varus Edge is my go-to scan tool whenever I'm doing uh, most of my diags. I know everybody's gonna say snap on. I mean, if I need another scan tool, then I've got a bunch over there sitting on top of my toolbox. Um, but my Varus is typically just my first grab, so that's why I have it on my station. For up here, I've got my snap-on multimeter. Um, I just printed up a little case for it to hang on. And then I've got a, I think it's a 24 or 27 inch monitor on a swivel stand. So the reason I went with swivel stand is the last time that I had one of these, I actually had a cart very similar to this whenever I was in a shop. It had the monitor that was just mounted straight to the back. One thing I did not like about that was whenever you position the cart, you roll up in front of the vehicle or where have you, if the cart's twisted at a certain angle because of space confinements or whatever, you're kind of confined as to what you can view on your monitor. Whereas now, let's say the cart's kind of pushed into the corner and I need to see something over here, then I can just kind of flip my monitor around and see from over there. So the monitor is actually attached to just a little mini uh, PC, just a kind of a cheap one off of Amazon. I'll get it fired up for you. Um, it's between that and then also the Varus Edge is tied into it all through this little HDMI hub, which is right here. As you can see, just a normal laptop, keyboard, mouse, with a computer sitting over there. And then if I want to switch it over to my Varus, then I just come over here and there's a little button down the bottom of it. I can just tap the button. It should cycle. All right, so I was trying to get this. I guess my little HDMI hub kind of went out. Go figure for the video. But this hub typically will let me cycle between the Varus Edge and the computer. But for the sake of argument, I'll just throw it in the trash later. Um, <clears throat> then, of course, every diag cart has to have a good cup of coffee with it because who doesn't diag with a coffee? Um, I kind of just got the wires ran through the screwdriver holes as much as I can. I know I'll have people giving, having a heart attack because the wires aren't ran perfectly like them, but it does justice for me. So here I've just got a flashlight because you always need a flashlight magnet because I always drop stuff. Little pliers for fuse pulling. I've got my ATS eight channel scope. And then a battery tester. You always need a battery tester because a lot of issues are solved with a good battery or a fresh charge on the battery. Um, and then I've got this IPA uh, deoxit. We actually have this on our website, but it's excellent. 
They actually saved me on that charger right there. I will post some pictures right now of what the PCM connector looked like before I started messing with it and then after. And that was big help. <clears throat> and then continuing on on the outside of the cart over here, I've got my Pico 4425A just on one of our mounts where you can kind of just pick it up and move it. Um, it either stays here connected to my mini computer or if I want to go mobile with it then I've got a laptop that's got another mount on the back of it and I just slap it on that. Um, I do have the Pico lead boom with one of our mounts on it. Um, I used one of the mounting holes for the cart itself and then had to drill one more. But what I like about this is it's easily removable. So if I ever get aggravated with this thing or I just need to clear up some stuff, I could pull that out. Um, up here I just have a BNC lead, um, one of our uh, hooks, uh, the lead hook that goes on the hood, um, some fills probes. This is you. This is me, and that's the guy she told us not to worry about. Um, got one of my amp clamps right there, and then these are all the Pico leads. And then this is the just a couple of um, secondary ignition probes, just the clamp on for like the spark plug wires. Like I said, multimeter. Then up here, I've just got some random junk collecting same for up there if you come around back we have some of our hooks we have these for the uh, harbor freight cart as well as snap-ons but all they do is they just kind of hook on one good thing about these is if my monitor wasn't there i could still shut the hood or shut the uh, top with the hook still on there and then I've got all my ATS leads, and then each one of them's got a space for amp clamps, and so I've got my extra amp clamps. There's my high amp clamp for the 4425A, but here's just a shot from the back. And if you do notice, there's no wires going to this, and my monitor was turned on running the computer. It's because down here, I have a surge protector with a built-in battery backup. That's pretty good for whenever you just need to kind of roll it around the shop, go over the car, and you don't want to be tethered to a wall. Um, with this computer and the monitor while it's also charging the Varus, it's good for about anywhere from 30 minutes to just an hour and a half. It really depends on what I'm doing. Like if I'm running the Pico, then of course it's going to drain even more voltage. So... Um, there's that front all right so the top drawer just got a little kind of organization thing this is just a bunch of random bull crap um different fittings and such um, i got some attenuators and then spark plug puller or not spark plug fuse pullers a couple of just alligator clips for holding stuff and some razor blades bunch of fuses, some light bulbs back here, just some stuff for AC and some known good relays. Um, here's all my kind of back probes. And then in these two over here, I've got a mixture of just clamps, alligator clamps, so that way I can hook up my test leads, piercing probes, um, piercing probes. And then over here, I've got my relay bypasses with the um, amp loop on them, so that way we can, let's say you're wanting to test a fuel pump or um, <clears throat> you want to check all of your fuel injectors or what have you that might be on the same, uh, might be on a relay, you can test it with this. Second drawer down, this is my pressure testing drawer. So I've got my WPS 500 in one of our cases. few different hoses um, just different test hoses so like this one right here is actually designed to go on to my mighty vac um, radiator cap 
so that way I can use one of my VA sensors on a radiator for checking for blown head gaskets. Um, this one's just another Foster 2 to Foster 2. Um, I use that one for my BMW oil cap. So different hoses and such, fuel, exhaust hose, a tool in the wrong drawer, because that never happens to any of us. This drawer over here, so I've got a bunch of fuse loops. So if you're wanting to test a circuit where, where the fuse where the fuse goes, you can pull the fuse out, put a put this in line with it, then you can actually probe in for power. And then you can use an amp clamp on it for testing any type of current that you might have going through that. Um, just some more back probes, some more back probes. This is our VDD box. Um, I use this for parasitic draw testing. You hook it up the Pico, and then I've got a custom probe built in the Pico software, and all it does is it reads the voltage drop internal on that, and it converts it to amperage, and it'll show you what type of amperage draw you have on the battery. What's good about that is, let's just say it's a um, parasitic draw that is very, very long. Like, let's say it takes all night for it to happen or something. You can put that on, put a really, really high time base on the Pico, and then just walk away from it, come back in the next morning. The Pico will be able to tell you kind of when that parasitic draw happened. Um, you can do that with an amp clamp, but amp clamps um, have been known to f like kind of fade over time, so it might give you a skewed reading, whereas that's going to read true. Um, then over here, I've just got a bunch of breakout leads. So these were from my time at Kia. These were a lot of the, the ones that they gave us there to work with. Um, standard breakout. And then these are some of my Warwick ones. Um, just mystic ones that I've just kind of acquired over time. And then these ones right here are good for um, some of the GM ones, especially where they've got the comb that you can take out and separate the, um, the comm lines. So that way, if you're trying to figure out which uh, module is taking down the network, these are good because you can take the comb out and then you just plug these in one at a time while you're watching the network and it'll help you track down which circuit or module is taking down the network. Next door down, just kind of some random stuff. Uh, one of our five volt boxes. Um, I was actually using it as on this same charger over here. I was having a map sensor code. So I use this to simulate or to plug straight into the map sensor with some of my test leads and verify that the map sensor was working. And then I ver as you seen in the pictures earlier, you'll kind of see why I was having map sensor issues as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, this is one of the OG BMW fuel caps that I made. Um, you actually seen this one in a previous video. Then these are kind of breakout leads for coil on plugs. So that way if you're trying to read secondary on a coil on plug, you can just plop these in place and connect into one of these right here and hook into it and be able to view secondary. Um, just another BNC lead, but this one's got a BNC lead, but this one's got a grounding strap. And then these right here are just banana test leads. So if I just need an extension lead or just a lead to go from one thing to another, that's what's those. And then this is my OG um, ground splice, the very first, first one I ever made. It's still kicking and doing good. That's why I never made me another one. Um, just some extension leads for the ATS scope. Then I have my e-scan. And then our high amp low test light. And then just some other little probes for checking stuff. And then I've got my e-cop back here. That's good for checking secondary as well. And then I've got the little adapter if I wanted to use the snap-on. I've got all the leads that go with it for checking secondary on the snap-on as well. Bottom drawer. 
Um, I got a relay tester. I got the grenade VA sensor because sometimes you just want to say F this car. Um, this is the ATS IC camera. It's the inspection camera and then the tip is actually movable. So let me see if I can get this. You can actually move the tip on this one. This one actually has been by far the best camera I've used. Um, I've got a really old video where I was kind of comparing this to some of the other ones that I had and I hands down love this one. Um, this is a Matco, it's a Matco solder so that way you just put the wires in and then kind of spin it up. I've used it a couple times. I don't even know why I still keep it in here. Um, this is a plug that I made years ago for you plug it into a cigarette lighter and it gives you a known good power and ground. This is a transducer plug for if I wanted to use the 5 volt box on the snap-on scope I could plug a transducer into it. A um, couple of test lights. This is the one that you guys seen me make in one of my videos I don't know about a year year and a half ago. Um, these are a couple of temperature probes that go into the snap-on multimeter so that way I can read temperature. I got a breakout box um, charger for the ATS scope and then one of our very old just 12 volt boxes if I just needed to supply 12 volts will actually give you a voltage reading and an amperage of it. I've used that before for testing circuits just to see if the circuit's being overloaded because it will tell me the amperage just while it's in line. Down below we've got the AES Wave uh, U-Test kit. I use this tons. It's really really good for making your own breakout leads or just test leads in general. And then I have the IEA engine analyzer. Engine analyzer kit that goes with the 8 channel. You can actually use most of this stuff on a snap-on or the Pico just depending on what adapters you have. But it comes with the different transducers, um, the negative 30, the 500, 300, an exhaust hose, some compression hoses, the different leads that you need for connecting it to the scope, um, and then a spark tester, or not spark tester, a, um, the name of just went out of my head, but it's pretty much that way you can um, ground out a ignition coil if you've got it pulled out um, while doing end cylinder, so that way it doesn't fry the coil. And then the tailpipe sensor. What I really like about this kit, especially with the tailpipe sensor, is misfire diagnosis. Um, sometimes whenever you've got a vehicle that's misfiring and you're trying to locate the misfire but it's not giving you any counts, or there's no, there's no counts, um, no PID to show you which cylinder is misfiring, you can use that or some other built-in software in the ATS um, to diagnose a misfire, to actually read the misfire. You can do the same thing with a Pico, but you actually have to build your own channels um, for that, or frequency channels. Um, over here, I've just got a couple more of my scan tools, the IM608, the Top Don Phoenix Plus, then a couple of key tools, um, my Maximus 3.0, and then over here, I've got my key machine, and then some adapters for the key stuff. But all in all, it's within easy reach of the cart. So, I mean, that was just a kind of a quick walkthrough of the cart. Like I said, tell me guys what you think, um, what you would add, change to it, uh, or anything like that. Uh, <clears throat> so, thank you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me guys today. Um, like I said, if you like the cart, let me know with a like. Um, comment down below if there's something you think I should add to it or something that you think I did wrong on it. I'm always up for criticism. Um, so, thank you guys for hanging out. And always remember, did you die act today, bro?